Oh yeah, now we're we are now live and recording. Hey everybody, hey Star Family, great to see you all here. Um not that a big turnout, but I think a lot of you guys can watch the recap, and I think a lot of you guys already maybe are watching the market instead of watching us. I do understand, but don't worry about the market, worry or think about what's coming for the next couple of months. And this is what we will discussing today. This is what we will discussing during this crowdcast. We will discuss about what's coming to Astar, what are we working on now, what are the latest updates. Um, so let me share you my screen and start presenting. Um, share. Oh, not this slideshow. Okay, so welcome everybody to the community crowdcast on November the 9th. Great to have everybody here. Um, so today we have on this call Soto Watanabe, founder of Astar. We have Hoon Kim, he is the CTO of Astar. And then me, um, I will be the moderator and head of ecosystem development. And we will be talking about the recent updates, a recap of our latest achievements, a little bit of information about XVM SDK, a lot of letters um, attached to each other, but what is the meaning behind this? What are we building with XVM? What does this mean? What will the future bring with XVM? This will be explained by Hoon. Then we have the Swanky version one coming out as well in a couple of weeks. So this is also something that Hoon will be talking about. The Swanky tool, the all one tool for Wasm developers. And I will be taking over the depth staking part. Where are we now? We had like a recent update with the depth staking portal. What's coming in the next couple of weeks? What are our expectations with depth staking for the next couple of months? And to end things off, we will also have like a Q&A. So in this crowdcast window that you everybody is looking at now, at the bottom you see like ask a question. So that's the place where you should ask a question. The troll box on the, on the right is just to share your moon thoughts and Ostar, the Dijon stuff, go ahead, go freak out there. But if you have like a real question, use the ask a question box. So at the end of this presentation, we will go over all the community questions and we will do our best to answer each and every one. Thank you. Um, so the <clears throat> recent updates, I will leave this up to Sota. So Sota, if you need to go to the next slide, let me know. Thank you. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Sota Watanabe, founder of Asta Network. And today I'm going to show you our recent updates. So uh, as you may know, uh, this is the, the biggest announcement we made uh, two days ago. So now we have a partnership with NTT Docomo. I would like to explain why it is super important for us. And we agreed to make uh, use cases, Web3 use cases together on the top of Asta, especially uh, environment problem and some of the problem in Japan. And NTT Docomo is the largest mobile operator in Japan. And 37% of the Japanese people are using NTT Docomo every day. So 37% of the whole population, which is big, big, very big. And also they have uh, 40 billion on the annual revenue. And the parent company, NTT, is the fourth largest company in Japan. And one third of their stock is owned by the Japanese government. And the, two days ago, NTT Docomo disclosed that they're going to invest 4 billion US dollar into Web3 in upcoming five years. And we are working really close with NTT Docomo and they help them to make a best decision how to use 4 billion and yeah uh and NTT Docomo makes web3 use cases together with Asta foundation and accenture so this is big um in 2023 i will do my best to bring a lot of the japanese big company into Asta, and i have been already started talking with the company you know, uh, and also Candy Guard. Uh, Japan has great IPs like, you know, manga or anime and so on. So I would like to bring a lot of the IP stuff to Astar and Polkadot. So Candy Guard will be minted on Astar. And Yoshitaka Amano uh, tweeted about this. And also uh, after the Candy Girl, 
more Japanese IP will be planned to be deployed in quarter one and quarter two. Highly likely quarter two. Yeah, next please. And third one is Asta hosted a Polkadot conference in San Francisco and the roughly 200 people joined at the conference. And I realized that people started talking about Asta a lot in the US. In the US. So uh, I think Asta is pretty popular in Asia and the, we need to make it popular in the US. I'm in the US right now to talk with potential investor, project, and so on. Uh, yeah, making strong presence in the US is very important for us. And the, yeah, uh, I joined uh, Nikkei Global Management Conference, as known as uh, Japanese Davos meeting uh, after CEO's, Sony, Sony CEO's talk. And yesterday, my friends, friends shared that uh, Nikkei is the, the, the most famous newspaper in Japan. And yesterday, my friend told, told me that. Uh, I was listed at the page one together with the CEO of the Sony or Nikkei, Nikkei Shimbun, Nikkei newspaper. Uh, I, unfortunately, I cannot see because I'm in the US right now. <laughs> I think Web3 is well recognized in Japan and the Japanese government made Web3 as a national strategy. So I will do my best to push uh, Web3 in Japan and bring a lot of the great IPs and big companies. Yeah, uh, I think in, in 2023, Asta will become the go-to market chain for uh, all Japanese you know, enterprises and also developers. So this is our focus in quarter four in the first half of quarter uh, 2023. So in quarter four, we plan to make innovative use cases in a Polkadot ecosystem. So the, the problem right now is I think smart contract parachains are leading the ecosystem, either Asta or Moonbeam. But the problem is 100 of, uh, literally 100% of DAPs on Moonbeam and Asta are EVM copy and paste project. So we have to make something very unique, which only Polkadot can realize. So we're gonna focus on XCMP, the cross-chain messaging passing, and also Inc. and WebAssembly smart contract. Inc. is a smart contract language made by Parity for WebAssembly smart contract. <clears throat> so we're gonna make ecosystem tutings in the, I'm talking with Parity to make Inc. Bounty program. I think Inc. Bounty program is going to be big and we're gonna fund, we're gonna support uh, project who is who are using ink and we aim to be the number one leading chain in a Polkadot ecosystem by the end of this year and next year we uh we're gonna i'm going to focus on japan and we would like to make the leading japanese chain supported by big fortune big fortune 500 japanese companies and talented developer so I will do my best to conquer Japanese market in 2023. And narrative needed to be changed. Right now, people are comparing Asta with Moonbeam, Ast Akala, Parallel, and the others. But during 2023, Asta needed to be compared with Solana or Nia or Branchi. So we would like to be recognized as the alternative emerging L1 chain. So Yep, uh, and we're gonna make uh, EVM use case. We're gonna bring Ethereum ecosystem to uh, Asta, and we're gonna make something unique, which only Polkadot can realize on Asta. By doing so, we would like to be recognized as emerging layer one blockchain in, 2000, in 2023. And we're gonna leverage Japanese market. Yeah, next please. So from here, who is going to talk about technical updates? Hey, hey, swankers! How's it going, everyone? Although probably I shouldn't use the word swanker. That's yeah, it's a little bit of a horrible way to <laughs> say our community members, unless you like it. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Sota did uh, explains how what we've been doing so far. It's really amazing to see all the development going on, and he also explained about the uh, the, the Inc initiative 
for gathering all the ecosystem projects who are using Inc or WASM contracts in the Polkadot ecosystem uh, to, to you know really push that narrative there. And now I'll be introducing you to our latest updates that are purely about WebAssembly stuff. Uh, so I'm really excited to show you. The first off is XVM SDK, which, uh, which is short for Cross Virtual Machine Software Development Kit. And I think XVM is something that uh, some of you might have heard uh, me talking about for a couple of times. So the idea here is that we want to create a, a uh, a protocol um, within Polkadot or uh, within Astar that allows interoperability between WASM and EVM. So what this does is it allows any WebAssembly smart contracts deployed on Astar to communicate with contracts that are deployed on EVM. Traditionally, this was really difficult because of different account scheme, different address base, uh, and well, generally just the, the how foreign everything is. But uh, thanks to our brilliant engineers, we were able to develop the XVM core. It's uh, it's going to be available in Shibuya very soon uh, for you to test out. Uh, and now the SDK is, the, we do have the core side that accepts the uh, encoded parameters that will be that will be used to call a contract on either of the environment. But um, right now, it's quite hard to expect developers to, to know all the encoding schemes and just use them on the fly. So what we're trying to do here is develop a bunch of bunch of SDKs or a bunch of contracts, uh, UI libraries, documentation to, to educate the developers and, and let everyone easily use uh, XVM as part of their core logic. And yeah. what's so interesting here is XVM is so easy to use with, with the SDK uh next slide please that uh, i'm going to be uh, showing off a demo on sub-zero uh it's it's a uh, i'm actually working on the demo application as we're speaking so uh, like trying to code and talk is, is a little bit hard but i'll i'll show you the power of of what xvm is uh how what's possible in the future, what, how developers will change their, their mindset in the future and when they're creating interoperable smart contracts, not just within Astar, not just within different environments, but across different networks and, and the potential of having a unified, uh, a unified control or access of any assets in any chain from a single account. Now, uh, the, the presentation is going to be on November 28th, Builder Space B uh, from 3 p.m., uh, 3.45 uh, p.m. So please see me there if you are going to be at Sub-Zero. Next. Uh, now, we uh, have some great news for Swanky. We had the Swanky V1 release. Uh, next slide. I think Swanky has some crazy news that uh, might be interesting for everyone. So this is the first major release of our Swanky suite, which includes the CLI tool and the, the node tool. And this feature, uh, this release includes, includes the account management uh, system, unit tests, network management. So you can actually choose networks and deploy on uh, on live networks like Sheeran. Uh, we're also planning on adding integration tests as a sort of an extended scope, uh, ask support. So this means that now developers can scaffold not only Inc, uh, which is written in Rust, uh, but also ask, which is based in assembly script. So this really expands the language capabilities of WASM contracts in OSR network. And we're so excited to see how many people will be able to uh, jump in and really create some crazy stuff. Uh, and most importantly, we are working with the Fala team to support FAT contracts in the, as part of the Swanky suite. Uh, it's still under development and uh, we're really, we're really working close to follow team, so really excited. And as you know, uh, previously we had a Twitter space uh, the, from the Swanky account, and we have our own Swanky Twitter account, so please do follow. Uh, the idea here is to really push Swanky as its own tool uh, for the ecosystem, not just exclusively for Astar. And this is uh, this will go well with the uh, with the initiative Sota mentioned about bringing Inc together. Uh, yep. Uh, next next slide. So, uh, Martin, you there? I oh, am. Yeah. So, Martin and uh, Sasha, our core dev, who's working at the Swanky Cli, uh, they will be they'll be introducing Swanky, uh, the, the latest Swanky suite on Sub Zero. Uh, this this uh, presentation is more targeted towards beginners. So, even if you uh, haven't really developed 
touched the substrate or haven't developed any smart contracts before, this is a way to, to show you how easy it is to create your own DAP, uh, own Web3 projects with, with the Swanky Suite. Uh, and their, their presentation is going to be at the starter space A uh, at the same, same time as me, sadly. So uh, sorry, Martin, I think I'm going to be, I'm going to have to take away a lot of your audience. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. That's no problem. We can say like at the same time, hello, Srankus. I think we will get a lot of attention there. <laughs> um, uh, when I have you here now, I will already start giving you a question from the community. On, uh, John's oh. asking, uh, will we be able to incorporate the move language like Aptos and Sci into the Star SDK or in the Swanky SDK? All right. So move language itself is also, I believe, um, it's it's like it's like very similar to Rust. So if you're talking about just syntactically speaking, well, yeah, developer perspective, it should be easy to make. But if we're talking about actually a full support, uh, it means that someone has to create a a par or substrate contract interpreter for move language. Now, is that easy to do? I wouldn't say it's too hard. Uh, from my understanding, I don't I don't think like Aptos has anything anything too crazy like asynchronous um, functions or something. So it should be it should be possible hypothetically speaking in the near future when there is someone who's actually going to make that compiler happen right now mm, no as it is it's not possible uh and swanky is just a tool to gather various languages and support developers to support more, much more uh more languages so if there is a team who are interested in making a move compiler for for substrates then we are more than happy to support them and that put them put them as part of the swanky suite yes that's correct as you may know swanky is open source so we are trying to get the developers out there as well committed into um joining the swanky development and become like a real swanky dev and a real swanker and and, and keep on developing together with us we are currently starting this move with the swanky but it's not built by a star. It will be built by a community who will be using this by the developers who will be using this to build with lots of smart contracts. So everybody who is welcome to join GitHub, join the repo and start developing together with us. It will be, I think our engineers will be very happy to, to see you guys coming. We already have like great support from some builders out there. So the more, the better, I would say. Thank you. Um, thanks for your talk. Thank you. I do have other questions for you later on, but okay. let's keep that in the Q and A session. Sure, later. sure. It's about Sheila Networks. So. Ah, okay, that's important. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then we go to the um, the final chapter of this crowdcast, and it's about DAP staking. As you all may know, all the stakers out there in this community crowdcast here now, we have been updating our DAP staking portal. Um, you can say it's not that big of a change, but it really is because it makes it much more easier for new people coming into our ecosystem to navigate between the dApps who are available to stake on. It's still a big part of our, um, how do I say it, from the biz dev side and from the marketing side as well to educate our community what is dApp staking, why is dApp staking so important. and. We, we want to educate the community together with a great friendly UI. And at the moment, we change it to a much more friendly UI. It, it will give you much more information. Um, the developers now who joined AppSync and can now add it to their cart and can add more pictures, latest updates, um, and do much more than they could before. And we also added some text for when there is like um, a huge pile of dApps available that you can select on, on text as well if you're interested in an NFT project or DeFi project and so on. So as you go to our portal.astar.network um, and you go to dApp staking, you will see the new UI. It's available on Astar, it's available on Shide, and it's available on Shibuya. Um, we are now in version two. Soon at the end of the month, we will release also version 2.1. Um, what we will provide with this new version at the end of the month is give much more data to our stakers that are interested in joining DAP staking. Now, if you go to, let's say, for instance, if you look at this slide to, let's say, the Asa Sign Rich NFT project, there is no data available. So you need to look on DeFi Llama, you need to look on DAP Radar, 
how many users are trading this nft what's the volume of this nft um where is it traded on and so on and so on so with the next version we want to provide as much data as possible for you when you click on the card you will see um the price you will see the trading volume you will see much more information than you currently can and this will make it much more easier for the stakers to stake on a project that they want to support it's not that you stake on a, the first project you see you leave it and that's it a lot of the current stakers do it like this but our main goal is to educate the people and say like i want to stake my astar tokens on an application that i want to support because my staked amount will give that those developers an incentivize they will give my staked amount will give a reward to those developers why would you stake on a project that you don't know or that you don't support you are giving money to developers from a, from a dApp you don't use. So it's best for everybody who's using dApp staking to look for what am I using? Am I using the multi-sig? Okay, I really support Ostar Safe. I stake on those developers. Um, for instance, on Ostar Safe, the developers behind this on this multi-sig, they created a, a fork of the Gnosis Safe. So they are using um, the funds that they get from dApp staking. They will use it for their infra costs. They will use it to pay their employees who are doing like daily upgrades on the Asta safe um, when they're implementing new features all those um costs they will use that with the depth seeking rewards so um, and this is how it should go as well um and that's why it's so important for users who are using depth seeking that you can support the depth that you want to support and you really see bringing value to the ecosystem we also have a feature in our depth staking, and I also want to highlight this. This is the nomination transfer. So everybody is staking on a depth can easily transfer his staked amount to another depth that they want to support. So if you're now listening to me and you say, okay, Martin is more than right. I want to stake something on a depth that I really want to support. Please use the nomination transfer, transfer from one depth to another and start supporting that developer team. Um, and that's something that we really want to emphasize here. When there are more and more um, dApps available, um, it's very important that you will support the correct dApp. Um, so a lot more is coming as well. Another update that's not in Q4, but it will most likely be in 2023. I'm not sure if it will be Q1 or Q2. That's where we will um, have like a new dApp staking tokenomics available. When that's like, now we have the dynamic inflation, and its dynamic deflation will give a minimum um, rewards to the developer and a minimum rewards to the staker. And this is dynamic based on the TVL staked on that staking. Currently, we are in the pre-research phase, but we are looking for together with tokenomics experts on how we can really leverage this much better towards stakers as well to developers. So you may expect as well a new change with this. This will also not be decided by us, but will be decided together with everybody here in the community. We will open up the moment when it, and our research is ready. We will open up a topic in our forum where we will discuss this with our community. We will do a poll together. We will decide this with the community, and then we will enable the new mechanism um, first on Shibuya, then on Shiden, and then on Astar. So a lot of things can be expected with depth staking because this is still our unique feature and something that makes us special towards other um, layer one chains at the moment. So as you may see, it's still bear market. A lot of developers are not developing at the moment because they will not get any grants or they will not get any support. So depth staking is a perfect mechanism that you can show in the bear market um, that you can do something, make a difference and get daily income by building and by providing value to our ecosystem so depth staking is like a perfect mechanism for new developers to actually build in bear market because you get incentivized from day one if you start building and using depth staking so it can be some another thing that you can think about if you are a builder um, to explore astar and to explore our ecosystem and explore depth staking as a whole um, I think I said everything regarding depth staking. This is from my end. So to end this off, we will have a Q&A session. But first, I would like to hear if there's anything else from Hoon or Sota before going to the Q&A that you would like to add to this broadcast. 
Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Martin. I think quarter four is really important time for us to prepare for the next bull market. And I think 2023 is the most important year for us because um, we're going to have a lot of the partnership with the big Japanese companies and we're going to have a web assembly. So we can make uh, innovative use cases on the top of a star beyond Polkadot. So uh, during the hard time, I think community needed to be you know, connected and we would like to make community driven project. So your feedback is really appreciated. And thank you, thank you very much for being with us under the, you know, under the hard time. Yeah, I I agree. And although I would say like every quarter is important. Um, yeah. You know, equally. Uh, and next year, I'm really excited about next year because there's so many interesting things coming up. Uh, people, a lot of people say it's like a bear market, hard, uh, hard situations. We're going to make it uh, and all that. But for me, I'm just so excited seeing, uh, looking at the Polkadot ecosystem where we always have new projects coming up, new, uh, new things, new technology that we can tinker with. So you know, think of it this way. Um, you, you can always now, thanks to this, uh, market condition, well, I don't want to talk about market, market condition too much, but um, just thanks to the uh, external factors, it's easier to focus on development. And that's what Ostar is planning on doing. Uh, we have so many things. I've uh, I've, have, I've been having so much fun trying to look, looking at these new projects coming up into the Polkadot ecosystem, but also other ecosystems and new technologies, XVM, very exciting stuff. So everyone, I yeah, everyone, uh, please stay tuned to our latest news because you will be surprised with what we are able to create. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, Huin. Huin, uh, I also have another question for you from the community, and yeah. it's something that I saw as well in some other reports um, that I currently read about um, Astar as well as Polkadot in general. So as you already know, it's not only related to the market, but Polkadot in this whole is also losing some momentum, and this also reflects on us as being a parachain. So a question from the community is, have we star ever thought about becoming a blockchain in its own um or is this technically not possible since we are a parachain and connected to polka dot right so, so what's guess, your opinion about this the question i, I uh, basically is can um has Oster considered being a standalone chain and you know, break away from polka dot now marketing wise breaking away from polka dot i think that's that's viable like uh it doesn't make sense that a website advertise themselves as like you know we built we're built on AWS or something like that, or we're deployed from AWS. Like it's not it's not something that people would really say like oh yeah it's AWS and they're really great so we know this website is great. Like that's not how it works, right? So of course you can make a bad parachain if you're if you're even on Polkadot. Uh, so but when it comes to Oster Network specifically and um, technically speaking, so technically converting a parachain into a standalone chain is possible it's just really just a matter of like which consensus algorithm are you using uh we can use the the traditional sta uh, proof of stake that polka dot is using uh just by doing uh, a runtime upgrade although i don't think it's going to be as easy as just runtime upgrade because obviously we have to converting collators into a validator is is a huge challenge um, because the hardware requirement is different, but also how, the way how they're maintain, maintained is different, and the security implications will change. So that's one uh, that's one one of the major things that we have to consider when converting uh, from a parachain to a standalone chain. Another problem is with token economics, because as you know, uh, the whole Astor Network's value proposition, one of the major value proposition is DAP staking. And we try our best to make developers uh, get get more by building good stuff. But this, uh, this we can only do this because we don't have to pay too much for the collators in the grand scheme of things. But And that's possible because collator, the hardware requirement for collators are pretty low. They, we only require stable uptime. Uh, we don't require any like specialized hardware or any, um, or any like certain processing power. That's uh, it's although there are there are recommended specs, but if you become a validator, you there is a the cost of maintenance will increase, and for those people, it only makes sense that the validator rewards are higher than the cost of maintaining one. So the so this is something that we have to consider, and that means that we have to decrease the rewards for DApp staking if we want to become a fully sufficient. Uh, decentralized standalone chain. Of course, if we are centralized, then 
like there isn't really any problem except for the fact that we are centralized you know that becomes a huge problem um yeah and technically it's and technically speaking there are a lot of works to make this happen where you know pair chains can seamlessly become a pair chain uh or a standalone chain uh just like switching it back and back and forth uh i i'm i talked with someone from parity who's also uh who's, who really wants to work on that part too but at the moment and for especially for Oster network in the near future no we do not have any plans to do that and i i think the cost of doing that is higher than the benefit that would bring us i totally agree we are not planning to do this at all okay uh, so i I Sorry, have, uh, um, yeah. speaking, we are, we're going to stay in a Polkadot ecosystem, but in terms of the marketing, I think we, we have to use another narrative, maybe Japan, to lead the blockchain ecosystem sure. as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we, um, our, the perception uh, doesn't really matter. Like, that, that, that's not what gets us the slot, right? Yes, correct. And like somebody from the community says as well, it makes sense to also stay with Polkadot regarding security and cost. It's just makes it so much easier as well for us and focus on other things that are more important for our builders. Uh, so I have a question for you as somebody from the community is congratulating, congratulating us on the great partnership with NTT. Um, so his question is, will they launch some kind of projects to solve um, social issues utilizing the concept of a DAO? Will it be possible that we could stake on NTT on DAP staking or is this some kind of what's the agreement that we have with NTT. Yeah, uh, we have already started making uh, social use cases uh, right now. And English is pretty limited because NTT is one of the biggest company in Japan. So yeah, stay tuned for the the use cases. So uh, let's say but uh, we formed Asta Lab, Asta Japan Lab in some of the national strategic area we had a partnership with the national strategic area like Fukuoka city, uh, Sendai city and so on, like city in, in Japan. So we have already talking with the local government and, and the, they bring us some of the use cases. So we're going to make the use cases together with NTT.como to utilize that use case, not only that city, but also other cities. But we, we just started, uh, two days ago from two days ago. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, another question that um, maybe I can answer, are we going to have EVM DAP staking? Um, we decided on EVM DAP staking to go for now with Algem, our, our partner who we have who creates like the DAP staking. Um, for us, our liquid DAP staking. And I know that they will release a new version in the next couple of weeks where it will be possible to take with EVM on multiple depths and not only on Algem. So stay tuned on this. We are planning, we had planned to have EVM depth taking um, in our roadmap, but it changed when we had Algem so we could focus on other things. Um, but I need to ask Hoon here, is this still something on our roadmap that we will support EVM depth taking? Yep. So, uh, well, first one clarification, we, the chain itself already supports AVM DAP staking. We at the moment we had um, DAP staking pre-compiled, like, and you can directly call DAP staking from MetaMask and all that. It's just a matter of do we add that to the portal or not? And uh, as Martin mentioned, yeah, because Algem already created a solution, we we do have a backlog internally. But after Algem, we thought that there are other things that's more important. So the priority is very low. Uh, do we have plans to do it in the future? Well, I guess. It's well, not really like, not right now. We don't have it in our roadmap explicitly. It's more like something that's a good to have. Uh, and we, yeah, but it's an open source project. So if the community is interested in implementing it for us, we're, we'd be more than happy to review that. Uh, but that's the current status. Yes, correct. Because it's already possible through smart contracts. So um, if a builder is excited to build this, they can already, already do this, yes. Uh, another question that is popping up and got some votes is for you, Sota. Um, what is the concern about Alameda investment in Astar? You're still muted. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think two things. First, I'm going to make an announcement, I guess. Uh, first thing is the investment. Uh, the, 
we raised 22 million from uh, a lot of investors. And the, our biggest shareholder is Polychain. And Polychain has uh, invested 15 million out of 22 million. So Alameda is pretty much very, very small amount compared to Polychain. And the also market making. Um, I We have been monitoring the on-chain and we didn't detect uh, Alameda's dump. So I, I have been communicating with Alameda right now. So it has it, it will be a busy days. But uh, I think impact is very limited. Yes, correct. And moment. yes, and we will also have like an official statement um, um, or some tweets coming out with more clarification later on as well. We still need to um, go through some legal stuff as well. But um, don't need to worry about the impact for Star for this because we already have checked it out and. Um, there is no concern to have at the moment. Um, yeah, it is true. Uh, Alameda is our shareholder, but uh, very minor shareholder. And the next question. So is XVM the system that connects EVM and WASM? Pretty straightforward answer. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. Although, although I mean, I, I guess um, I could elaborate a little bit more. XVM also. itself is meant to be a protocol that connects any arbitrary contract environment. So at the moment, it connects yes, WASM with DVM. But hypothetically speaking, it can connect to any arbitrary environment like Cosm WASM space, gear, or uh, whatever contract environment Solana is using when, if they survive. You know? So there's, so it's, it's much more than that. And we plan to, we plan to have XCM support to XVM, uh, which will be a mouthful to speak uh once that happens you can have cross uh, environment cross chain cross environment contract execution indeed um like toga is saying in the troll box whom can talk about xvm until all of us get drunk uh, yes. i mean if you if you see me in sub zero i can guarantee you yeah <laughs> okay another question for you hoon um when was him on mainnet uh, when was my main it? Okay, that's a. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I think that's also a quite simple story. Uh, right now, our major blocker is the contract palette audit, uh, the ink language audit, and most importantly, ink 4.0. So, ink 4.0 is actually not compatible with ink 3.0. Uh, there's going to be a breaking change, and if we introduce WASM contract right now, then every DAP that deploys now are basically useless. Uh, well, I mean, they're not useless, completely useless, but it's, it's going to be really hard to actually make them useful. Uh, so that's why we are waiting for everything to settle down uh, from parity side and other parties involved. And I believe Open Zeppelin is the one that's actually auditing. Uh, and that's going to happen most likely in the first quarter of next year, ideally January. But when, when parity says January, it's going to be like February. <laughs> Indeed, correct. Um, I will just go over some questions. Some I will answer right now. So somebody is saying, "Can I swap a star to SDN?" Yes, you can on um, Art Swap. And this brings me to the next question: Who can you just give me a little bit of updates regarding Shida Network and where the Shida now is at at the moment? Um, short, one minute, two minutes. Sure. Uh, she didn't. She didn't know. We're still in the growth phase. I would say we're trying to. It's it's hard to get community engagement, uh, especially when it's like such a minor network and in, um, in, in this climate. Uh, we're trying really hard with that, and we are going to have a. We're going. We're planning on having a more regular community calls for Sheeran and some activities. Uh, I I will be more involved in it, and we are going to do some really fun stuff like being part of the Kusama. Uh, governance council seat as as with the from the sheet and sovereign account um, and doing some other weird cross contract cases yeah or cross chain cases actually yeah so that's that's what we're trying to do let's see yes um, I see an answers already answered by Toga in the chat so is it possible in the future to get that project tokens for staking as star for project? You can if you use the pre-compiled on EVM, um, and it can also be done when it's built with Wasm. So um, it can already be done, but not through the portal. Um, this is again a nice have. So if anybody wants to build it, it they can always do this. Um, how many circulation supply are there? You can check on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, or even on our portal. 
when will we have interoperability with Cosmos or other layer one chains? Well, I guess the the term like it depends on definition of interoperability. If we're talking about bridges, then we already do have a lot of bridges. Uh, well, we only have like one bridge provider, but we already have we are already connected. Uh, in terms of like full on contract uh, interoperability for Cosmos, it's going to take a while because there are so many ways to to achieve this and we're also talking with octopus network for, um, we're also talking with uh with composable and uh it's it's still in development when is is hard to say but probably middle of next year is when it's when we can say when it's going to happen Yes, indeed. And if you are talking about like the interchain with smart contracts, um, we will announce it as well very soon. We got the seller, seller inter messaging protocol available on Astar, meaning that you can do like similar things as XLR is doing with seller. And um, we are also talking with other um, projects or bridge providers like Excel, XLR or with XLR itself to provide as well an infrastructure on Astar. So more and more to come on this part as well. Um, then there's a question, the re-delegating is great. So nomination transfer is great. What about when we have ledger implementation? Can we do a nominate transfer without unbonding our Esther? Yes, that will be possible. Some of us already use ledger on the EVM Esther side. So that's not a problem. Um, that's done. And then the question regarding a burn mechanism of the transaction fee. Um, I need to confirm this with our developers if it's already merged. I'm not so sure. I think maybe who knows? Because we already created like the PR available to have like 20% of the transaction fees to be burned. I need to confirm if it's already I, available in our mainnet. I'm not yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's live. It's I, I do recall seeing um seeing development happening there. Uh, but regarding the second part of the question, like we'll have, will will we have a fixed max supply? Well, <coughs> for, <clears throat> fixed max supply with our current token economics, I don't think that's going to be happening because a uh, thing about staking rewards is that it's always from in, uh, inflation. It's just a matter of like the burden rate versus the inflation rate. Uh, at some point, yes, the burden rate is going to increase uh, exponentially, but will that lead to fixed max supply? can't say that's correct and um, it'll be very difficult we are already talking internally about um doing some proposals regarding burn mechanisms except for the, the transaction fee and again this will be handled the same way as we will do with the depth taking tokenomics it will all be transparent and with um direct communication with our community to discuss this as well on our forum so um that's all from the questions from the community. So I think we can wrap things up. So for me to end things up, thank you everybody for tuning in, for listening to us. We are very happy to have you here with us with the support. Um, and yeah, let's try to move ourselves in this bad market condition, but you can always count on us to keep on developing. Any final words from you, Hoon Sota? Uh, okay, I guess I can go first. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, for, for those people who are missing my bandana, you can see me in Shiden. Uh, from Shiden Dao, maybe I'll wear a bandana there when we're doing a community call. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, let's keep reading. Keep reading. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning Thank in. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.